Okay guys, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about pattern and about how I play with patterns that I'm going to use to fill an object. So, if we look at this area here, I've used a very simple curve shape on the bottom, a bit like a tooth, and at the top I've used a triangle. Then to make them more complicated, I've offset a line, this is called offsetting, when you move a line to one side of something, to give me a different line, and I've put a small circle in place. This makes it more interesting and I can add that to all of it to get a more complex pattern. Likewise, with the triangles, I've done the same thing, offset, offset and add tone. Okay. Uh, I particularly like these squiggly lines, because they're quite nice, and they could be used to fill in a big area. Also, to break up a big area, I could use big curved lines and then just hatch into them um, to fill in areas and break up a flat area into a more complicated patterned area. Once I've put these lines in here, I could use any of these type of patterns continually inside those lines to make them more interesting. Over here, what I've played with is just using zigzags and offsetting the zigzags in a different way. I've looked at the idea of putting lines in and cross-hatching them where I can add colour, and the idea of big curved lines to break up an area. On this sheet down here, variations on fill areas is doing more Aboriginal type work with small dots in place. This can be used with curves, or can be used with just offsetting random shapes to get an interesting fill area. I can go back to very simple systems of working where I'm using just a grid and then I check the grid by colouring in different areas or add pattern to different areas. Depending on the orientation of your grid you can get diamonds or you can get squares. And this is what we're going to be using on the next exercise.